I'm Carolyn Shapiro, Associate Professor of Law and Director of the Institute on the Supreme Court of the United States at Chicago Kent College of Law. Shell, would you introduce yourself? I'm Sheldon Neymar, Professor of Law at Chicago Kent College of Law as well. So we're now going to talk about the uh, specifics of the Fisher versus University of Texas case, the case that arises from Abigail Fisher's application to be admitted as an undergraduate to the University of Texas. Uh, con she challenged the University of Texas's uh, attempts to create uh, more diversity in their class by uh, considering race as one of several factors for students who they've admitted after they admit the top 10 percent of all public high school students in the state of Texas. It's about 15 to 20 percent of the entire uh, uh, admissions pool. And Abigail Fisher is white. Uh, and is alleging that she was denied an opportunity to be equally considered uh, due to her race. So what happened in the district court? In the district court uh, upheld the constitutionality of the Affirmative Action Plan, which, as I mentioned in the prior segment, dealt with the uh, use of a personal achievement index. And a factor there was uh, the racial criterion, as well as others. Um, and the Fifth Circuit, a very seriously divided Fifth Circuit actually uh, also upheld the constitutionality of Texas Affirmative Action Plan, a uh, major dissent by several of the judges. And uh, one of them, Judge, Judge Garza, I believe, specifically said that uh, while the majority of my colleagues uh, seem to have followed the Grutter uh, ruling, uh, I have serious problems with Grutter. Uh, for one thing, and then the other thing he said was that the uh, majority, uh, the court deferred much too much to Texas authorities in terms, school authorities, university authorities, in connection with their views about the need for uh, the use of this racial criterion to promote academic diversity. So he made several arguments, but the Fifth Circuit upheld. So now the case goes to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court has to decide whether or not this plan is constitutional. And does it have to decide whether or not Grutter was correctly decided? It really doesn't. Uh, the, uh, the plaintiff, Abigail Fisher, uh, does in fact argue that the court ought to uh, overrule the Grutter uh, case. You pronounce it Grutter, I pronounce it Grutter. Let's, uh, let's not call the whole thing <laughs> off. Uh, and. Um, she says if we, if we overrule the Grutter case, then uh, race is not a permissible factor at all in university admissions, end of discussion. But uh, there's also the argument made, uh, good lawyers make arguments in the alternative in any event, that uh, irrespective of whether Grutter should be overruled, uh, it uh, was not properly applied in this case because the Texas scheme despite its claim that it is designed to promote academic diversity, really is all about racial balancing. And racial balancing, according to the Supreme Court's case law previously, makes very clear that racial, ba that racial balancing is unconstitutional. But ra so it's okay to try to promote diversity, but academic it's not Academic diversity. But it's not okay to say we need a certain number or percentage of students of a particular race. And correct, class. correct, because that would make race determinative and not just a factor in the decision to admit. So the Supreme Court could decide this very broadly and dramatically change the law f across the country, or it could decide it, it could strike down the Texas plan, but do so without really changing the law for the rest of the country. That, that is correct. And to show you how fascinating this all is, just in terms initially of court watching and justice watching, uh, when Grutter was handed down, that was a Justice O'Connor opinion. She was in the majority on that one. You recall that upheld the constitutionality of the use of racial cri uh, of a racial criterion as one factor. Uh, Justice O'Connor is no longer with us on the court. Uh, she was replaced by Justice Alito, who very likely uh, disapproves uh, uh, very seriously of use of any racial criterion uh, in university admissions. Uh, cases. So now the question is, are there five justices who, are, uh, who might be persuaded to uphold the constitutionality of the Texas admissions uh, plan? And it's interesting, the, the Fisher brief, Abigail Fisher's brief, 
uh, better. The University of Texas brief uh, uh, referred specifically to many opinions by Justice Kennedy, really tailoring, the University of Texas tailored its arguments to Justice Kennedy because they, uh, the lawyers must have perceived him as being the swing vote on this. And of course, Justice Kennedy in the University of Michigan case uh, voted on the other side from Justice O'Connor. He would have struck down the law school's plan to take race into account. So why would people think that he might be the swing vote here? Well, uh, the plot is even thicker than that because in the parents involved case, which we haven't talked about, we really don't have that much time to get into, but it involves the use of a so-called uh, uh, use of race as a determinative criterion in racial balancing for, an el for elementary and secondary education. Justice Kennedy did not join in the opinion of the four other justices who said race is always an impermissible factor in this setting. He said there are other ways of accomplishing this while treating students as individuals. There are certain race conscious remedies that may be available. So I think what people are inferring from that wishful thinking or not, we'll find out, uh, is that Justice Kennedy is a little more sensitive to uh, the need for uh, racial use of racial criteria in the educational setting. And maybe that will transfer over to the university setting, but it's, it's, it's anybody's guess. So one of the interesting things about this case, of course, is that Justice Kagan has recused herself. So there are only going to be eight justices voting. What happens if Justice Kennedy and the three other liberals on the court besides Justice Kagan vote to uphold the Texas plan and the other four justices vote to strike it down? Well, as, as you know, if it's 4-4, four, four, uh, the decision of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals will be, uh, will be up, upheld and there may very well be no, there wouldn't be any really uh, determinative decision by the United States Supreme Court. So there would have to wait, we'd have to wait for, for another, another case. case. That is correct. On the other hand, if Justice Kennedy joins the four conservatives, there might be a five to three Correct. decision to strike down the Texas plan. Uh, at, now, has there been a lot of interest in this case? A tremendous, a tremendous amount of interest. Just the other day, I went online and found out that there were, or saw, and I haven't read all these briefs, I must tell you, uh, there were 17 amicus briefs, friends of the court briefs filed on behalf of Abigail Fisher, 73 by my quick count, amicus briefs filed on behalf of the University of Texas from other educational institutions, from professional organizations, from lots of law professors individually or as a group. Uh, there may even have been some, I'm guessing, from the business sector. In fact, I, I'm almost certain there were, maybe from the military sector. Uh, in the Grutter uh, case and the Grass case, there was a lot of action by amicus uh, uh, in the amicus brief setting as well with respect to showing the importance of, of uh, academic diversity and racial diversity for citizenship, for the legal profession, for the military, for business, for our competitiveness with the rest of the world. So uh, the same sort of thing is going on over here, I'm virtually certain. Now Chief Justice Roberts has gotten a lot of attention recently for his vote in the Affordable Care Act. To many people's surprise, he turned out to be the swing vote voting to uphold the Affordable Care Act. Is there any chance that he'll be the swing vote here? Well, that's a, a nice question. Um, I would say the chances are, the odds are against it because in the parents involved case, uh, he went out of his way to say, among other things, that the best way to eliminate racial discrimination in every setting is to stop discriminating on the basis of race. So I read that as uh, implying pretty firmly that racial cri the racial criterion should simply not be used, uh, even in the uh, academic uh, diversity setting. So he's using the word discriminate to mean to use race as a factor, to consider yes, race, whether for benign or invidious correct. purposes. So that, these will be the arguments that we'll see playing out in the Supreme Court. It's going to be fascinating to, uh, to watch. Okay, well, thank you, Sean. Thank you, as always.